Next question is from the entity known as Manny. What are your opinions on stretching before and after workouts? You know what? I'm going to talk about the after workout. Okay, so static stretching. So we'll talk about static stretching. That's when you hold a stretch for a long period of time. It's that traditional type of stretching. It's what most, I guess, the average person will think about when you say stretching. Post-workout, especially when you're, your muscle is pumped, there's some evidence. Actually, there's decent amount of evidence that deep stretching induces muscle hypertrophy. Now, the hypertrophy that you get, it's a bit of a short uh, gain. So you'll see this immediate gain and then it kind of plateaus. Nonetheless... I've experimented with this where I'll work a body part and then I'll do a really deep stretch of that same body part at the end of the workout when it's really pumped. And I do notice some beneficial effects. So I'll start with that. I think post-workout stretch, and you don't have to worry about the CNS at that point, you know, making a muscle maybe disengage a little bit. Who cares? You're done with your workout. Mm -hmm. um, static stretching post-workout, especially in the muscle that's been worked and pumped and warm. It's actually kind of cool. It's an advanced technique. Give it a shot. I, yeah. think, I think that stretching in general is fantastic. I just think that it's applied incorrectly. Yeah. Um, you know, we should say, uh, you know, stretch with purpose, right? So if you're going to, don't just stretch to stretch. And I think that, I think stretching has been um, promoted for so long as it's, you know, oh, it's so beneficial. So you should stretch all the time. And I think there was this idea that you should definitely stretch before you go in and work out, and it's been applied incorrectly. When you hold a stretch, and I'm speaking specifically to static stretching, which is the most common way of stretching, which right. mo the average person is is used to seeing. So, if you hold a stretch for 30 seconds and beyond, uh, you know it doesn't matter what it is. You could be stretching anything, and then you go into a, an active workout. Not a good idea. You've basically relaxed those muscles, relaxed that body, and then you're going to go call upon it to do something either explosive or heavy, and that's just not smart, dangerous, not a good idea. Doing something more like mobility that where you're, or an active stretch where they're, they're, they're short holds and you're basically just kind of you know warming the, the muscle up, right, pumping blood and fluid into there to get it warmed up and prepared or get better connected. That's a great way to start uh, your workouts. And then post, I agree with what you're saying, Sal, incredible to stretch post. Incredible to stretch throughout the day, the rest of the day, too. Yeah. There's nothing wrong when you're watching TV, get down and, you know, in the pigeon or in a 90-90 and do a nice hold and stretch. I think that's phenomenal for you. But before you go into a workout, uh, you're not wanting to send the signal to the body to relax. You want, you want to be active and alert and ready to go. And when you static stretch before you go into a workout, that's exactly the signal you're the body. Yeah, I mean, would you guys really do a static stretch anymore before a workout? Uh, never. I, never, right? No. It, it, I mean, unless there was like some serious, serious limitation yep. uh, that was was limiting you uh, from even being able to to do these types of movements and, and, and get into positions. Uh, but other than that, I mean, you're, you're the, the whole intent Good point. of, uh, you know, working out and adding load is to, to create tension. Uh, and then I see it more as like, uh, in post, uh, to then relax the entire system and, and, and be in that state. And even if I were to static stretch to like get a muscle to get out of the way so I can do something else. For example, it's like, usually for correctional exercise. I right, say, right. So like, okay. So, but even then, I would do something dynamic or active afterwards to kind of, for example, okay, like someone trying to stretch their chest out, right, or warm their chest up before like a bench press, but their shoulders are so tight and pulled forward. Like maybe you would do this static stretch on the anterior delt to kind of relax the shoulders a little bit so you can then do this kind open of- Open you up. Yes. Yeah, open you up so then you can do this kind of dynamic warm up for the chest, but then I would still do something dynamic to- to reactivate the shoulder. So I get them to relax. Right. So I can get into a deep stretch on the chest. And you still need support. I, so it's yes. not just, yeah, passive. So I would yeah, I never totally just agree. do a pure static yeah. stretch by I, itself. I think a better example would be, I would do this with clients sometimes. There, there was so tight in the front of their body that they couldn't do a proper row because literally yep. it kept their shoulders forward. So then I would do a static stretch of the chest, which would just get it out of the way. And then we could do a better row. And since the chest is not involved in the row. Right. It wasn't really that big of a deal. So to, to kind of break this down a little more, here's what happens when you do a, a static stretch. The reason why you improve the flexibility in that short term, when you hold a stretch, you're, by the way, your muscles don't get any longer and they don't become more pliable like if you warm rubber up or something like that. That's not what happens. What happens is you're sending a, a signal to the, the master of muscle contractions, which is your central nervous system. And the signal is saying, hey, it's cool. 
you can relax a little, a little bit. Stop keeping this muscle so tight. That's why when you hold a stretch, you find like, oh my God, I can go move a little for, forward. Oh, I got a little bit more range of motion. Because the CNS is literally starting to relax. One more part of that, okay? And this is actually, this came to me today because I was taking Doug through some stretches this morning while he was working out. If your goal is to do a static stretch to increase range, you know, that, that range of motion, let's say at the end of a workout, you have to relax and breathe through the stretch because if you keep mm -hmm. your face tense and tight and you're trying to hold, you're sending a conflicting signal to the central nervous system. You're saying, relax the muscle, but my, wait a minute, the rest of me is saying, keep everything tight because I'm in a lot of pain. Yeah. So, and I learned this in yoga. I remember doing a yin yoga class. And you got to breathe through it. Yeah. And, and there was like tensing and the lady comes over and she goes, start breathing, relax. She's like, your body's not going to loosen up if you're, and I'm like, oh yeah, it makes perfect sense. So I just kind of sat in it and opened up a little bit and it, it totally worked. But yeah, pre workout. Dynamic stretching, mobility work, priming, post workout, static stretching. And I think that's kind of the yeah, winning maybe foam rolling. The winning formula. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.